So here we go. Finally getting around to it. Uh, I read the book a little bit ago. I finished it oh, uh, just a while ago. I should have reviewed it earlier. I just never I always have other videos. So this is the first time I'm getting to actually get to this review. Um, I read this read this is a weird term uh i listened to this as an audible book and this is my very first audible book and i gotta say i was impressed so if you have audible the voices are really great i don't know if this is a normal occurrence or not or anything like that but the voices were really great uh leia's voice it really helped me get into the like mood of the book star wars it really helped with that um aspect and then the sound effects the music and stuff like that it was pretty cool uh definitely something i would try again audible definitely uh so i recommend it if you have like the subscription for audible i recommend definitely using it for some star wars books it's pretty cool i don't know how it's like with other books or any, any other star wars books for that matter but i enjoyed bloodlines with it so um but bloodlines uh, just a basic synopsis of the story follows Princess Leia in a time where the Galactic Senate is split between a uh, populace, which is what Leia's faction is. They're, I guess what you could say, describe them as is they're uh, for the people. So they believe in the people making a lot of the decisions and stuff like that. Uh, and having like, you know, lower military and stuff like that. Uh, and then there's centrists who are very militaristic like and believe that like the government should have like another emperor or whatever uh the case is like an actual dictator who has power the that way things can actually get done and not just be lazy or sit around now knowing that the book revolves around these two things and it takes place uh six six years i think before the events of uh, Force Awakens. So this kind of sets up how the First Order comes about and stuff like that. And that's that's kind of why I picked up this book. Um, it also was highly regarded. Like, I had uh, really good reviews on it. Um, but, sadly, that's not mine. Uh, so, knowing that it's Leia, and who's obviously a galactic senator, um, and then knowing that it's basically going to revolve around politics between the centrist and populist. Um, first off, that is kind of my biggest problem with this book. I'm not a very political person. So for me, a lot of this was a repeat of which movie? The first movie, uh, Phantom Menace. It felt like that with all the politics, a lot of the scenes. It wasn't as bad. Like, it had action thrown in and stuff. So it wasn't like... like all politics like you're just sitting in the the <laughs> you're just sitting there the whole time in the galactic senate no it, it had some action thrown in and definitely it had some cool like han solo scenes in there and then uh leia action scenes but um it focused largely on that it focused on also leia's um her views like her after her ptsd i guess you could say but not not no not like super bad ptsd like nightmares or anything it's like like uh she sometimes missed the adrenaline but then a lot of it was war story like um the war story type thing like she had uh like just terrible memories of like when vader tortured her etc like stuff like that so she had both sides of that coin going on throughout the whole book where she like missed the action but at the same time she just had these horrible 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 memories that she would relive with uh darth vader and stuff like that um so you know the book was for me the politic part was a little bit boring and over excessive sometimes um but you know the scenes with leia were a really good insight to how she how she kind of is and like how the war is just a, again just like lords of the sith um, these new canon books don't focus as heavily on action like like the Legends books did or so or stuff like that. These books seem to focus more on uh, character perspectives and, and stuff like that, different views on characters and um, character development. So that I like about these books a lot because the other books didn't really do that too much. It focused a little more on action. I just wish these books would balance it out a little bit more than they do at the moment. But um, anyway, so uh, those two sides are clashing and the whole premise 
of the story is that Leia is investigating a um, trafficker. She's investigating uh, criminals who took over after the huts after the huts left. Um, uh, I think they're Nico. They were Nico, I think. Uh, specifically, though, uh, Rin Riven Dai, who is the leader of this cartel, and uh, she takes a centrist senator with her to do the investigations, uh, whose name is Senator Casterfo. He's a really cool new character. I like. I enjoyed him. He was um, centrist, like he liked the Empire, but he again different perspective. He liked the empire but he did not like vader or the emperor so basically he believed in what the empire's uh i guess governmental system was he believed that if the emperor was a good person that basically it would have been a whole lot different like someone with all that power can do good if they are a good person and again it's just different perspectives the book really highlighted the fact that like you know it really highlighted that the empire couldn't wouldn't have been just all bad it was more palpatine that was all bad and i did like that they highlighted that throughout the series uh leia and kesterfo constantly argued about it and stuff like that and later became friends whatever but you know the book really highlighted the fact that the empire wasn't what was bad about about the original trilogy it wasn't the empire it was palpatine and vader that made it the way it was so that it was definitely an interesting perspective to see people say that and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, they investigated, they were investigating Rin Riven Dai and all the stuff and they kept just turning up things and basically it led to, uh, them discovering more and more, a deeper plot than just, just some basic criminal activity. They discovered a deeper, uh, deeper thing. Um, but um, yeah, for the most part, like I said, I'm impressed with the writing of the book. I like the character development that it that it uh, had. Um, seeing Leia and seeing her interact with people, how she's different, how she's fed up with the Senate at times, and but she's really trying to help. Um, it definitely highlighted Leia's Leia's character. It definitely shone some light on the events that like that she went through in the war, like Vader torturing her for the information, and then. Um, her killing Jabba the Hutt, you know, she has strong feelings about that too. It's just a lot of stuff you wouldn't think about. It really highlights about Leia. And then it introduces uh, new characters, like I said, Senator Kesterfo, her assistants, her assistant Greer, and um, a couple other characters too. Uh, Joff C. Stryker, who's an X-Wing pilot who grows on, who grows to be part of Leia's team. Um, so it has all that focuses on all them, but Leia is definitely the standout character in this and it hints at some force awakens stuff too. So that's interesting. Sometimes it doesn't really go anywhere though, because, um, obviously a lot of the stuff in the force awakens can't be, they don't want you to know, obviously certain things. So, uh, for example, Luke and, uh, Ben, Luke and Ben or Kylo Ren, if you want to call him you forgot his name real name uh they're still out of touch somewhere so leia like tries to contact them a few different times throughout the series and she leaves them you know hollow messages and they're out of contact the whole time so it makes you think you know when did this happen i mean i would assume this honestly happened because leia even said ben was they were on a distant planet and they were going to be out of contact so i don't think anything as far as like uh, Ben turning to the dark side, I don't think that has happened yet. Just for the fact that you know Luke said that they were going to be on distant planet, and this is six years before the Force Awakens. He wasn't that ex- he wasn't experienced enough to be in the movie. He wasn't experienced enough to be uh, six years of training already. There's no way Ben was six years into the dark side because he would have been way way stronger. He was still an apprentice of the dark side in the Force Awakens. So. Um, but yeah, so it hints at, the book hits at certain stuff like that. It doesn't really get into how the uh, First Order was started until the very, very end. And it also gets into how the Resistance was started as well. So, uh, like I said, that is basically my review of it. I mean, like I said, like the character development. Uh, the action scenes were fun. Han Solo scenes were awesome, seeing him back. Uh, really, my only complaint about the book is, is, is the excessiveness of the politics and stuff like that so other than that 
it was a decent book. I just wish they had a little more action thrown in. Um, and a little bit more, I feel like Force Awakens um, hints, whatever you want to call it. A little bit, little bit of throws towards it. Um, but decent book. I still suggest it, if not for anything besides for Leia's character insight and uh, just to see how the First Order really came about and why it came about. Um, so that's that's it for bloodlines review um i'm gonna review ahsoka came out recently so i'm gonna go ahead and pick that up soon and start reading it so i can get that going and, and let you guys know how that was um but go ahead and check out my other content over here on the screen and remember to subscribe for more videos like this and i'll see you guys later